In this video, we're going to talk about the Smooth tool in Fusion 360 Forms. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to carry on working in Forms, and I want to talk about the Smooth tool. Now, the Smooth tool is something that can be very helpful, but it does affect the geometry of your design. So I want to talk a little bit about some tips that I have for working with this. So to get started, we're just going to create a box form. It's always good for us to play around with making shapes and understanding how these are going to affect our designs. So inside of here, I'm going to go to modify and I'm going to make sure that I'm on the all selection. I'm going to select the midline and just sort of pull it up. I'm also going to take this midline and scale it out. Take a look at the design. Uh, I've noticed recently that whenever we're in a dialog, if we try to hit Alt and 1 or Alt and 3, that it does kind of mess things up. So make sure that you do deselect something. Now, this looks a bit odd, but it is a good starting point for us to understand the smooth tool. So the next thing that I want to do is double click this midline. I'm going to go ahead and scale this out as well. And then I'm going to insert edge. I'm going to use the both option and say OK. Now remember, when we use this, when we're using the simple insertion mode, it's essentially going to make something that's flat. So this means that I want to go back to that midline, and I'm going to scale it down just slightly so we do have a little bit of curvature. I do not want flat sections. Otherwise, there's, there's really no need for us to have them there. So smooth section. Again, we just sort of made a design. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select these faces here. I'm going to pull them out a little bit. And then I'm going to hold down Alt and extrude them. Now, obviously, you can do whatever you want. But this is, again, just going to be a general starting point for us to uh, sort of just make a new design. And again, just sort of pulling them out, making some sort of funky shape. Then last thing I want to do is I'm going to take these extruded faces on both sides and just pull them down a little bit. So something that has a little bit of detail to it. And one more thing that we want to do is double click in the middle. We're going to do insert edge both. This time I'm going to put them relatively close together and go back to box display mode. I'm going to take this midline one more time and scale it up just slightly. So I'm going to select the scaling in plane and I'm going to do 1.01 just to give it a little bit and then go back to smooth display mode. All right, so now we have a design. There's a couple things that we do want to talk about. The first thing that we want to talk about is going to be make uniform, and then the second thing is going to be smooth. So make uniform is a tricky tool. When we look at this in the box display and we look at it in the smooth display, what we want to see is that the divisions or the separation of these different faces and edges are going to be somewhat consistent. When we use make uniform, it's going to take the smooth T-spline body and it's going to try to push those edges closer to what the box display is. Now, in the recent update, Fusion 360 now seems to update that smooth body without having to go back to box display and to smooth display. So if we do Control Z, you can see what it looks like here. If we redo that, you can see how it sort of moves those divisions around and changes the shape. Now, it's always important that we try to maintain uniform distribution and we only tighten up the divisions whenever we need that higher resolution. For example, adding this ridge feature to the middle of this design. So now that we've done the Make Uniform, let's go ahead and talk about Smooth and what that does. Now, Smooth is a great way to fix potential problems, but it does come at a cost. The first thing I'll say is that you want to make sure your selection tools and your selection filters allow you to select through. The reason that's important is because if we box select this, everything on the underside is not selected. So you want to make sure that you do turn on your select through in the selection filters. And that way we can clear this and we can select everything. Now we have 72 faces, we've got everything. When we use the smoothing slider, essentially what we have is that zero, nothing happens. As we get closer to one, it's going to be more aggressive. And this is part of the reason why I wanted to show this, something that just had this sort of banana arc shape, is that it's really having a drastic effect on the curvature. So you can see that we have a nice rounded section here, a nice broad arc. And as we get to about halfway, it's starting to flatten the entire thing out. 
Now, the reason for this is because what it's doing is it's averaging everything out. If I take a look at this in box display and we take a look at the smoothing slider, you can see that it's taking all of these faces and it's pulling these closer together. It's scaling some of the faces down and it's scaling some of them up until it gets to this smooth distribution. So this is not an end all tool that you wanna use on your designs. And it doesn't have to be the entire design. What we can do is we can select individual faces that we wanna smooth. So for example, just here, and we can smooth just those sections out if we wanna maintain the rest of the design. Or let's say that we want to use it on just the edges. Let's say that we don't like this area and we wanna smooth this area out. We'll go ahead and select those faces, smooth it out. And you can see that it doesn't, it gives us more of a tight crease here and less of a smooth area. And that's partially just because of geometry. So once again, it's not the end all tool that you can use, but it does have a nice effect on some types of geometry. So now you might be thinking to yourself, well, what type of geometry does it work on? So for this, I'm gonna to go to inspect and curvature map analysis, and I'm gonna go ahead and kick the scale kind of all the way up. And the reason I wanna do that is one is to kind of look at the curvature on this design. I wanna show the hot spots that come up when we have these, these star points where we have three or five edges going into each other. And I wanna also take a look at using smooth on this now. Once again, we have select through. So as I drag this out, you can see that smooth is getting rid of some of those issues and is drastically changing the curvature. Once again, make sure that select through is turned on. You'll have to do this each time for some reason. And uh, you can see that it is helping some of those issues. Now, what happens if you want to keep the design mostly the same, but you still wanna to try to smooth it out? Well, the tip here is to go to modify and subdivide and once you're happy with the design, going to subdivide and let's say dropping it to two, to two extra divisions for each face, then going into smooth. Once again, double check our selection filter, make sure select through is turned on, grab everything. And now what we should see is that the, the smoothing slider has less of an overall effect on the design. It's not drastically changing the shape because we did subdivide it but it is helping smooth out those issues in the corners because now you can see we don't really have that drastic uh, yellow or white spot that we had at that T-point and the curvature is still largely the same. So that's the main tip here is that when you are using something like smooth on a design that has a lot of change in curvature, whether it has these sharper edges or these broader changes, sometimes using the exact subdivision to keep the exact same shape but then use smooth will help you maintain the overall design intent. Just keep in mind that smooth is ultimately changing the overall shape. Even if you do subdivide it and use exact, it will still affect or alter the shape. You could play around with the number of subdivisions. You can increase or, or decrease how much you're changing it in each direction, and then use smooth to try to help some of those issues. Now, in terms of when would I use smooth? I think that I've probably only used it once in practice because I, I try to focus a lot on the underlying curvature and the underlying geometry and rely less on using tools like smooth. However, the time that I did use it was really to help with some of those issues like the star points where you will subdivide a design and then use smooth to help alleviate some of the tension in the surfaces at those star points. And that's really the best use that I've found for it. If you've used it before with good results, please let me know in the comments. I'd like to know how these tools are getting used in practice for your designs. And if you have any questions, of course, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.